I'd like to call the 17th regular meeting of the Sheboygan City Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Certainly. Know your worth, know what you deserve, know when it's time to move on. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 14 present. Uh, Alderperson uh, Schneider and Savaglio are excused. Tonight we have a special guest to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Patrick has just recently, this last weekend, received his Eagle Scout. He had his Court of Honor uh, last Sunday. Pat is a member of Troop 859, which is chartered by St. Dominic Parish. Current, uh, and he's currently the senior leader of Troop 859. His Eagle Scout service project was an important learning opportunity. He wanted to provide the Sheboygan Leadership Academy, a local charter school, with a better and safer location for outdoor activities. He planned and directed the transformation of an empty lot into a natural playground through the hard work of 35 community volunteers who generously donated 220 hours of their time to make this project a success. Scouting has instilled the values of hard work, dedication, and goals and achievement in many boys and help them to become strong men. Pat's goal is to attend the United States Naval Academy and serve as a naval aviator. Please stand and join Eagle Scout Patrick Fisher as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pat, please come forward. Thanks for joining us this evening. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is um, mayor's appointments, city clerk, city attorney. The mayor hereby submits the following appointments for your consideration to the Sheboygan Squared Bid Board. Uh, David Gass, Scott Grinke, Stephen McCardle, David Hanneman, David Sanderson, and Dane Chekolinski. Thank you, those appointments will lie over. Next we'll go on to mayor's uh, confirmation of appointment. The mayor hereby submits the following appointment for your consideration, Craig Sider, to be considered for appointment to the Board of License Examiners as the second alternate, according to General Ordinance Number 191718. Alderperson Wolf. Motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, is there, all those in favor, please, I'm sorry, we have to call a roll on this. Yes. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 1.6 is Mayor's confirmation of appointments. City Attorney. Mayor hereby submits the following appointments for your consideration. Jody Kramer to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, representing the Memorial Neighborhood Association as the primary member with the term to expire April 30, 2018. And Nancy Maring to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, representing the Memorial Neighborhood Association as the alternate member, term to expire April 30, 2018. Thank you. Alderperson Wolf. 
Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Next item, we'll move on to a presentation the Sheboygan Squared Business District Annual Report by David Hoffman. Dave, please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and honored guests. Uh, I've never spoken before you before, so this is kind of something new for me, but uh, over the last five and a half years, I have been the manager of Sheboygan Square the Business Improvement District. And over those five years, the question that I get most often is, so you're the bid manager, what in the heck do you do? So uh, to answer that for you guys tonight, we're gonna talk about what we've done for the past year. Excellent. So for 2017, we, uh, uh, just a little bit of history, we established three working committees uh, that uh, work in, in uh, report to our board, and they are the Development com uh, Committee, the Marketing Committee, and the Operations Committee. These committees meet every month. Uh, they are uh, uh, formed with our members. Uh, some of them are board members, some of them are just the regular members, and we have monthly meetings and we set our strategy and our work plans and we work from that. Next slide, please. One of the things that we've been working on, and, and a few years back, a lot of us took a trip over to Holland, Michigan, and we saw a lot of things that they had done uh, for their downtown, and they've been working on it for about 20 years, so they were kind of pretty far ahead of us, but some of the things we noticed is, uh, they did a lot of creative things with music in their downtown and, and lighting. So we've been trying to establish that in our downtown. And you can see from the pictures, uh, this is a little bit of what we've been doing with, uh, as, you, as you know, we've got the great Christmas lighting. Uh, we've been lighting some of our underutilized spaces, which is in our alleys. And of course, uh, uh, one of the experiments we tried is having some classical music playing at the, uh, the water feature area of the library and it's been pretty effective at uh, kind of clearing out some of the kids that were hanging out and uh, just making it a more uh, uh, pleasant place to be. Also, uh, we, the last few years we've been uh, purchasing flowers not only for uh, the, the big planters that we have on the corners and then we bought the, uh, the baskets, the pole baskets. Uh, this year we actually bought new planters uh, in conjunction with the city and uh, Shoreline Metro. And in addition to that, uh, uh, separate planners for individual businesses. And we went with a different florist this year, um, uh, Otter Creek, and they just did a fantastic job. I, I hope you all noticed the, the flowers this year in downtown and throughout the bid, it was uh, really fantastic. Very happy with that. So we, uh, once again, from uh, a lot of the uh, uh, symposiums we've attended uh, targeting our underutilized spaces, especially along A Street. You know, uh, with Plaza 8, we had a lot of alleys that were closed off and they've kind of been neglected. So we've been trying to focus on those. And once again, with our lighting and our, our planters in there. And of course, we've, we've got a partnership with the Art Center to put some artwork in some of these alleys. And the first one you can see there on, on the bottom right-hand side, uh, adjacent to the Wild Center. I won't get into this too much. You all know what's going on. Of course, our development projects. To, um, we've got the Encore Apartments. Uh, next one is Portscape, of course. Portscape uh, phase one is completely full. Uh, and of course, they're building more and they're filling up fast. What we've seen with Portscape is uh, more of uh, uh, the uh, empty nesters, you know, people my age. Um, and they like the garages, I guess. In, and in Encore, we've seen uh, more of what, what we kind of intended there was the uh, uh, young millennials, about 90% young millennials. And then, of course, Parker John's a major uh, um, addition to our riverfront. 
And the new one, uh, the uh, Harbor Point, uh, not Harbor Point, help me out. High Point, High Point Apartments. Of course, uh, the location of the former Tripar. And that one's going up quick. This is a document that we've been working on, and this took a long time to put together, but I think we're, we're pretty happy with how it turned out. This is a document that we can use kind of as our talking points to, uh, to talk to potential uh, retailers and new members to the bid, and also to uh, uh, let our current members know just exactly what benefits and services we can provide for them. So it's a great document. Uh, we, we really are digging in more into our marketing. We, we now have a comprehensive uh, calendar uh, to coordinate our events, uh, what we're doing for advertising, our cross-marketing, we really want to focus on that. And of course, um, the social media, we found that a lot of our members really have no, just not much knowledge of how to utilize social media because a lot of it is basically free. And our, our partnerships with the arts community, you know, that's one of the things that we uh, were stressing with our, our um, master plan. Uh, we, of course, have the uh, partnership with the John Michael Kohler Art Center for the Levitt Amp Concert Series. It's been a, a big, big uh, success. And, of course, we're going to go into our fourth year now. We haven't gotten the grant yet, but it's looking very good. <coughs> little snapshot of our events over the past year. Restaurant week was new in 2017 and that was very well received. The restaurants are very happy with that. Uh, get some people out and about in the middle of cold January. Uh, Harvest Fest is always a great uh, great event for the kids and Venetian night. It's just only in Sheboygan could you get thousands of people to see some boats with, uh, with some Christmas lights on them. Uh, I thought I'd go back five years on this. Uh, this kind of gives you a little bit of an in, inclination or indication of how we've increased our social and uh, internet uh, web presence. Our, our newsletter started out with about 285 um, uh, subscriptions and we're up to 5,500. Uh, our website, our average weekly users, we're over 700 a week now. Our Facebook likes, we're at about 4,700. Uh, which is dwarfed by uh, Caitlin Bratz of Olive Who She's in the 25,000 or something, but we're doing pretty good. And our Map and Events Guide, which is very popular, uh, started out when I, when I started, we, we had 17,000, we're up to 30,000 now. So that's a great piece to market to, uh, to tourists, of course. And we want to welcome our, uh, our new members into the bid. This has been a banner year for new business. As you can see, uh, I won't read them all off, but we've got five there. Next one. Six more, Harvest Cafe, great place. Parker John's, of course. The Lost Sheep, great, great little shop. Uh, you know, if you've got people that like to knit, boy, they just love that place. And of course, Sportscape, repeat after me. We got them from the, uh, the Mill Road uh, little strip mall there. They wanted some more action, and they got it. And of course, uh, credit union was a name change. Uh, Art Image opened up uh, men's clothing once again in the downtown for the first time in about, about 20 years, I think. And Relish added on a cooking school, which has been very popular, and another uh, the, uh, name change on Marine Credit Union. On the move, Alvu moved across the street, kind of tripled her space, and she's been going great guns. The other one, very proud of his freak toys. If you've never been in that store, it's uh, uh, any of you watch pawn stores, a, a lot of people say that this, this store right here in downtown Sheboygan blows that one away, so check it out. You really got to be in there. You won't believe it. Uh, you know, our partnership with uh, Shoreline Metro and the guys over at Transit has been nothing short of amazing. A lot of the things that we do in the bid would not happen without those guys. Uh, DT, DPW as well, but those guys kind of really have helped us out a lot. So this was to uh, introduce the parking study. But anyway, thank you to the guys from uh, Derek and the guys from Shoreline Metro. They, they work on all of our planners and, and uh, keeping our, our streets uh, free of weeds, which is important. So looking forward to 2018, uh, one of the things we're gonna do to try and get a little extra revenue into the bid is an associate member program. Basically, we're, we're looking at uh, asking some of our uh, rental uh, uh, rental properties to kick in uh, 
a little bit of money towards the bid for uh, for our efforts, and then also an associate membership for people like perhaps uh, charter boats. Uh, charter boat captains would like to be part of the bid, and this is a way that they can do it without actually owning any property. Uh, marketing, once again, we, we've got a great uh, committee there. Uh, once again, trying to get pro cross promotion. This is something that Jane from Relish does really good. You know, she has a promotion, she ties it in with Alhu, she ties it in with the Art Center, with the Wild Center, just to get people downtown. The more we can work together, everybody does better. And operations, uh, we're gonna keep uh, working on these alleyways and, and other um, uh, underutilized spaces. Of course, we've got the City Green, which has been uh, finally getting to the completion stage. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, uh, it's going to be some work to get that space energized, but I think we've got a great start. Of course, we got Levinamp going in there, and we'll be getting some more um, uh, entertainment in that area. And, of course, keeping up with our flowers and our, our uh, signage branding. Uh, this is the biggest thing in my uh, five and a half years on the bid has been the cooperation between the bid and, of course, the city of Sheboygan, especially visit Sheboygan. Uh, the other ones you can see there, the John Michael Kohler Art Center. And I just, my, my hat's off to you guys. I wanna say one thing that really made an impact on me. You guys had the guts to stand up and purchase that Boston store property. If you wouldn't have done that, I don't think we'd be where we are today. Quite frankly, that took a lot of, a lot of guts and thank you for doing that. Um, you know, other communities we talk to, they, uh, they are jealous. They're like, wow, we wish we had that kind of relationship. But we have it here in Sheboygan, and that is to your credit. Thank you. Any questions? Other questions, Sorensen? Thanks, Dave, for, <clears throat> excuse me. Thanks, Dave, for you know, coming in today and chatting with us. I think a lot of what you guys are doing is awesome. Um, I did want to kind of talk about um, kind of what, what are some more future plans with some of the placemaking. Um, you know, are there any more alleys in the in the bid area that you feel like that we need to? You know, oh yes. The next, what what's kind of the future looking like for placemaking? Well, two in particular that we have pretty solid plans right now. Uh, the first one will be it, it's not really an alley; it's a, a space where the former Weaver's office supply was. It's between Mavericks Barbershop and in 501, the 501 building, and that's going to be another art piece uh, done by the. Uh, John Michael Kohler Art Center with a visiting artist, and that will get started in spring. Uh, and of course, we also have a real good relationship with the Sheboygan visual artist, and Peg Halbert has been working with us. As a matter of fact, we're meeting with her again tomorrow to perhaps get some, uh, some of the uh, local artists and, and doing some prints of theirs and actually having them up on buildings in these alleys. So it's, it's very it's exciting. It's, things are gonna be looking pretty good. Thank you. Chad Pelichek. I just wanted to say on that as well, we, um, in the block grant allocation for 2018, we put aside $75,000 to partner with the John Michael Kohler Art Center. So they will be doing a connecting communities program at the city green, which will be playable play structures. <coughs> so we don't know what that looks like yet, but it's a project that'll be rolled out in the spring where it'll be some additional art on the city green or the green space so that it energizes that space when it's not having a concert venue or some type of other venue there um, and it's kind of a thing of trying to draw people from both the art center and the downtown across that as a connector so um, that's a project that's I think about hundred and seventy thousand the National Endowment of the Arts is funding the rest of it and they've used some of our money as a match against a grant that they have so they'll be rolling that out this spring and hopefully getting these things constructed sometime in summer which should be a great add to the whole downtown placemaking thank you any other questions alderperson Boren Dave I just want to thank you for your uh, I think it's five years uh, as a chairman and wish you good luck in your retirement it, for I think the uh, older persons that are retired they can tell you retirement is highly recommended but stay busy <laughs> <laughs> I get calls almost every other day hey you want to be on a committee so I don't think I'll have any problems there thank you Jim appreciate that 
And by the way, uh, on my way out the door, I, I really enjoyed the last five and a half years. I got to tell you, it's been the most interesting job you could ever imagine. It's, it's really very unique. Uh, but uh, my successor, successor is Amanda Salazar, and she's got all that young millennial energy. I think it's going to be great for the bid, so look forward to that. Thank you again. Dave, don't run away yet. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, as, as you mentioned, Dave's going to be retiring in a few weeks. And I want to extend our thanks for his five years of service as the manager of the Sheboygan Square Business District. During this time, Dave worked tirelessly to accomplish and support the business district. He's worked to build strong partnerships with the city, chamber, SEDC, our cultural venues, and the businesses in the downtown and Harbor Center. Dave's a Sheboygan native who is well networked with the entire community, and these connections has proved to be very valuable in his position. The manager position is a one-man office, uh, no, but no job was beneath Dave when it meant to the success of a project or event. Uh, you'd be amazed the things that Dave has done uh, out, outside of what you'd normally expect of a, a business improvement district manager. Dave became active also in the Wisconsin Downtown Action Council and was Susan invited to serve on their board of directors. This last October, the Wisconsin Action Down Downtown Council held their annual summit in Sheboygan. Dave did a great job of arranging tours of our business district and presentation on the Harbor Center Master Plan. I had the opportunity to attend some of the sessions and was really impressed by the positive comments from these business district managers from around Wisconsin and what they had to say about our community and Dave's work to achieve this success. Dave, I want to thank you personally for all of your presentation tonight and all of your past efforts as the manager of the Sheboygan Square Business District. As a small token of our appreciation, I'd like to present you this key wow. to the city and, and uh, a big thank you to you for everything, David. Thank you. to the public forum. City Clerk. Uh, yes, this evening we have four people speaking. First on the list is Stephen Hemsing. Steve, if you could come on up to the mic. And Steve, can I have your home address, please? Uh, 1159 Cherry Lane. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you, Sue. I am here this evening to talk about the parking ordinance on Cherry Lane. There is no parking school days, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. only. Orchard Drive and South 12th Place also have the same parking restriction. This parking restriction came at the request of the residents on those streets at the time because of the many problems that were occurring in the area around South High School. There is a petition by some of my neighbors to remove the parking restriction on Cherry Lane. I am against any change in the parking on Cherry Lane, a street that I have been a resident of for over 32 years. Over those years, some of my fellow South High neighbors, South High School staff, the school board, and the police department have worked hard to get the South High area the way it is today. We now have new residents on Cherry Lane that, that, that did not live there during these trying times. <laughs> I understand the inconvenience this may cause some of the residents, but most residents are new residents and purchased their home with the parking restriction in place. Support of some residents to have the parking restriction removed should not be the deciding factor in removing the parking restriction. It should be why the parking restriction was put in place in the first place. If the parking restriction is lifted on Cherry Lane, you can bet that the new residents on the other two streets will ask for it also, and we will be back to square one in no time. Yes, there has been some remodeling at South High, but I feel as a result of that remodeling, the parking restriction is even more important now than what it was before for several reasons. 
I hope you all had a chance to read a letter from the principal of South High School. And it also has the support from the superintendent of schools. I would like to personally thank Principal Forlolo and the staff at South High School for really caring and taking an interest. It shows a lot when concerned neighbors and the South High School staff can work together. I am asking the altar persons and the mayor, if need be, to please the parking restriction on Cherry Lane the way it is. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Next on the list is Mike Brunette. Mike, could you come up to the mic, please? And Mike, can I have your home address? 1925 South 26th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right. I'm just here to speak against Steve. Ah, kidding. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I got a simple, simple thing, and it's like um, half procedural, half weirdness, but it's like, and nothing personal, like not, most of it's not supposed to be, but it probably is. But it's kind of like, it, my, what I signed up for is something in uh, the position of the, in the mayor's office that they're switching it over from the secretary slash whatever to communication slash same stuff. And basically, from what you read on your thing about the job description and what the duties are, and from what I read on the wall up on the second floor, out by HR, it's two completely different skill sets I'm seeing needed. But more importantly, and it's like a, my understanding of the city clerk's office, that they're more or less, they're the information people. When you guys need to know something, you sh you're getting it from city clerk's office, or they're getting the minutes, they're getting whatever, getting information out to the city. And all, you all know, if you pay attention to any of my rants, and it's like my biggest thing isn't what you're doing, it's usually the information and the lack of it. And basically, I can name more than one time and affecting very many of you, Councilman, where you're telling me afterwards, it's like, well, we didn't know what you knew. And it's kind of like, and I'm kind of like, how? Other than the fact that I'm digging and I'm getting it from people and not getting it from the same sources. But more importantly, it's, it's one of those things that I'm always shocked that nobody says, why aren't we getting that information? And the most part it's out there. And it's like, but a lot of it isn't, and it's very misleading. And when you vote on things, and then go, you can't blame me because we were told this, and it's that. And basically, it all boils down to that information. And information is actually pretty darn simple. I mean, you get it out there, you put it out there, people see it. But it's like, my concern is a good chunk of the people in city and county government these days are basically the staff of the Sheboygan Press writing all these articles. They're all communications people. But yet, you have a lot of communications people inside the city. Why, aren't, why don't you have a communications person? And it's like, and why isn't it, and I'd say the same thing about the TV station, why isn't it under the directive of the city clerk's office? I don't understand it. Because it's basically, all about getting the information out to the city. And if you read your stuff about the clerk's office, it's all cool, and it's saying you know, what you do, and they do it you know, for the most part, I'll say, and it's that the same of anybody anywhere, and it's like nobody's perfect, but it's like one of those, with the, the information, it's not that hard to get everything out through one central way, but the biggest way right now is there's a weird clearinghouse where people have even gone from closed door meetings in the past and this and that, and they go straight to the press and stuff comes out. Things get reported as if it's done when they're not done, and people are confused. And for the most part, citizens are all clueless. And me, I take it on the chin constantly with people saying, oh, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, when you told me it's wrong, until it turns out to be right. And it's not like I'm a genius, but it's like, it's kind of easy to see what's going on most of the time. And I think that if you do with the, the information thing, it's like that's all good to have an information thing, but not as a website designer, this and that, and da da da, and he's gonna be our PR guy. You have pretty much 
tons of those already. And it's like, I think it's more important to get all, just all the bare facts. Like, from a meeting per se, why isn't it just simply recorded, and which would be the easiest of all things and the cheapest, and basically online after the meeting, and then you can all just go back to the notes. More than once, I've heard all other persons go, it's like, boy, we look at these reduced minutes, which also take a lot more time to produce than the actual minutes, and it's like, we don't get the real minutes, and it's like, neither does anybody else. And on the same note as that, when you had your brainstorming session, and it was all about information and openness, my favorite part is the people who were doing it on that, their big, their big thing is, well, we're the ones that have the hard problem getting information, us the city council people, and it's like, no, you actually have an advantage, but the fact is, most people are drowning in a lack of information. And that's all I got, and have fun. Thank you, Michael. Next on the list is Kevin Pramola. Kevin, if you could come up, please. And Kevin, can we have your home address? Yeah, 619 Ashland Avenue. Okay, you'll have five minutes. All right, thank you. I'm here as the, speaking as the principal at South High School, and I wanted to speak about the uh, petition that is out for removing the parking restrictions of 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Cherry Lane. Um, for us, it's been, you know, thank you first to the Cherry Lane residents uh, for, for having uh, made this decision back in 94 and, and uh, upholding it through the years. It has been helpful for us in managing our students um, and helping them with making, kind of keeping those um, things from happening in the community. I do uh, just kind of want to give some background and just not speaking really for or against necessarily, but just want the, the older persons here to know some of the ramifications or concerns that I would have as a, the building principal about what this might mean uh, for us and for our students when it comes to uh, managing student behavior, but also looking at uh, student safety concerns as well. So as you know, our, our main office has moved uh, to a new address of uh, 1240 Washington Avenue. So our main office is now on the west side of the building where previously it had been on the east side of the building. Uh, so if you weren't aware of that, there has been that change. Some of the things that you know with just um, some of the scary things that are going on in terms of school safety, uh, we work really diligently at creating a one entry to our building during the school day. So students may enter the building uh, <clears throat> before 7.45 a.m. Uh, through two areas they can enter through the commons or through the main office and also through the uh, doors the previous main office doors by our library on South 12th Street uh, during the school day the only entry into our building is then through the main office for which we buzz every visitor into our school and we have some very uh, strict policies for students who would choose during the school day to leave or exit any other doors without permission uh, from us so um, so those doors are not kind of unlocked again until 3.15 and the students can kind of vacate the building through any door that they please. Um, and also during the lunch hour, we allow students to use the doors on South 12th Street, our previous main office, uh, during lunchtime uh, to support really kind of the, the surrounding neighborhood with kids who are going home for lunch. Uh, also Lucky Star on the corner of Washington and South 12th is a hot spot for many of our students. Uh, but re-entry back into the building during that time can only come back to our main office where students need to be buzzed in. So just so you have the background and kind of the, the change in structure that uh, is, is with our building hours and things like that. Um, the concerns that I have, you know, the current policies really allowed us to uh, manage and uh, supervise our students in a much more contained environment where with the school policy, we have some very strict policies on what students may have on their person or in their vehicles. So when we're looking at school safety, we know that the vehicles that are in our parking lot are subject to some of our own uh, building expectations with um, search, if you will, uh, with student permission. We do bring in the police department uh, canine unit periodically for which we do a run in the parking lot. So it allows us to kind of ensure that safety for our students when it comes to those pieces. Um, students are most likely will gravitate to those streets of South 12 or Orchard if they become a part of this as well and Cherry Lane because it is closer to our academic part of our building. Um, and there's also, you know, that piece of no off uh, campus supervision, if you will. We don't have cameras in there. We do have cameras in our parking lot. So it is some concerns for us. 
Um, community impact, I know that um, as experienced prior to 94 and there was an issue of uh, loitering, littering, skipping, and some of those things will probably come back to us when students start to see that the signs are down. Who knows how long that will take them to look up from their screens, of course. Um, some other issues on student safety is um, we have, you know, by creating the environment that we do have when people get dropped off or get picked up, um, there's not, a, a vehicle can't reside too long in our parking lot without one of us noticing it and going out and saying, hey, what's, what's going on? Well, you've been hanging out here for a while. Uh, we won't be able to have that same type of um, supervision when it comes to the city streets. We're just not going to be able to manage that. And uh, the other um, piece for us, I think, you know, I, I respect uh, the Cherry Street residents and I understand that uh, you're going to make a decision. I just hope that you take some of these pieces into consideration. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm hearing uh, an overwhelming number of the residents are seeking for it to be removed, but I'm hoping that there would be a speedy process if that in the event, uh, or if we're not able to do it now, I understand that you're bound by some of your own uh, bylaws and policies that if there was a way to get to resident permit only, it would really be a win-win for the kids and for the residents um, and allows us to kind of be able to manage our kiddos and keep them safe while at school and not have to worry about uh, what's happening on the other streets of our community. So thank you for that and uh, please uh, email me or phone me if you have questions uh, before a resolution is made if it's not tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. <clears throat> Excuse me, and last on the list is David Mim. David? And David, can we have your home address, please? 1144 Cherry Lane. Okay, and you'll have five minutes, sir. I also am speaking on the parking restrictions on Cherry Lane. Um, Saturday I received a letter, the same letter that the council got during the uh, Public Works Committee from Salt High's principal. Um, on there there was a note written that somebody reconsidered because we did not have uh, states. I might not have signed a petition knowing this, signed it with the understanding we would get resident parking only, not open parking to include students. With that information, I went back around my neighborhood this afternoon, today, and I talked to 13 out of the 15 residents that were home. Everybody's still in support of changing it, so I don't know who the one resident is that has a concern, but we have still overwhelming majority. I didn't have a chance to get to the last couple of houses um, as they were probably at work. We, uh, it's been an inconvenience by far stretch. I mean, not everybody works day shift. We do have third shift families that are there. And we only have certain amount of parking spots. As our kids are getting older, I moved in in 2009. My kids were very little. Now they're coming up to park driving age. And we're just out of spots to park. Now they're parking around the corner and out front of other people's houses. And just not seem right to us. Um, we'd like some consideration into this with us. We cannot change it to permit parking by a state statute, then we have to change it to take the signs down first, and then if we have problems, we'd like to come back and address it to get permit parking. At the City Public Works Committee, we had the police department chief there, and he stated that it wasn't a concern for the police department either if we park restrictions were to change. Um, I'd like your consideration and uh, really thinking about this and helping us out with this situation. Thank you. Thank you, David. And that's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. Uh, first of all, I want to remind everybody about the snow emergency public information meetings coming up. Our uh, Public Works Department has followed through and uh, formed a committee and put together some recommendations for possible changes in the snow emergency. and. Uh, at these public meetings, they're able to gain some input from the residents that they can bring back to the Public Works Committee at a future meeting. And those are going to be this Tuesday, um, the 12-5 at Maywood, this Wednesday, 12-6 at uh, Mead Public Library, and next Monday, 12-11 at King Park. And all these meetings are scheduled from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. 
and also remind everybody that the current alternate side parking has started. Remember to park on the correct side of the street based on the date, and the basic rule is park for tomorrow. And I'd also like to thank County Board Chairman uh, Tom Wagner for a uh, quick response and allowing us to use this room. Um, late last week, we found out that we had a problem with the elevator, and I took a call, and, uh, and he checked out the schedule and said, sure, it's no problem. Uh, and this uh, you know, may be an opportunity for us to test this, because when City Hall is being remodeled, we're going to need an alternate place to hold our meetings, and this could foot the bill for us. And uh, if anybody came late, just remember if you'd like to speak, press the blue, blood, blue button on the pad in front of you in order to get the chair's attention. Thank you. Next, we'll move on with the consent agenda. This will include items 2.2 through 2.15. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all, all our oaths, <coughs> accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and, and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Moving on to reports of officers. Um, item 3.1 is RO number 239 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, to whom is referred General Ordinance number 27 of 1718 by Alderperson Holshue, Schneider, and RO number 233 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Axley Bryslin LLP on behalf of Wilson Land Holdings LLC along with a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval and recommends approval of the general ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? the City Plan Commission, to whom is referred General Ordinance Number 28 of 1718 by Alderperson Holshue and Schneider, and RO Number 232 of 1718 by submitting a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval from Brian J. Brugink and Julie K. Brugink, a Living Trust, Three Parcels, Racetrack Road, and recommends approval of the ordinance and RO. Alderperson Ballinger. Thank you. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 3.3 will lie over. Items 3.4 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, uh, 4.1 is resolution number 104 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue, Warren, and Wolf, Ryan Fleisch, and Ross adopting the 2018 City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non represented <laughs> employees and recommends passing the resolution. Um, this one is scheduled to lie over, but I'd like to call up. Uh, HR Director Sandy Rorick to introduce this concept and give us some information and mull over till our next meeting. Good evening. I handed out a, a document that I'll be referring to. <coughs> the 
The success of our organization is dependent upon a skilled, trained workforce. On a yearly basis, employees who successfully perform their job are eligible for a yearly increase. The problem is that oftentimes we hire people at entry level pay and often they become fully trained in a position yet they're way behind in salary. So that is our current state and our future state is to offer not just the merit increase but for those people who are under market rate to have an accelerator built into their increase. Again, it's all based on merit and job performance. The first step of this process was to do a review of the positions and determine the market value. The second was to revise a pay scale. Our current scale has 16 steps. The new st scale has 19. And then to develop a reward program that offers uh, uh, different grids uh, and rewards for different levels of achievement. So what you see in the compensation review that's on the attached document, there is a, uh, it's called 2018 City of she Sheboygan Permanent Non-Rep Positions. This, this scale was revised and you did not receive the revised one. So what you're going to see next time is it has purple on the top. And that is through direct feedback from department heads and there was a few positions that we did go out and review with Carlson Detman. Um, they did not participate in this whole program, but they did uh, do some spot checks. And then you also have the, the new pay grades. Uh, there are 19 different grades. And you have what's called a merit increase guide. The hope is that we can retain our employees. We have had an increase. Um, approximately 36% of our employees are paid less than market rate. The number of employees who have resigned since 2014 have either doubled or tripled. And that's not people who retire. We average about five to seven employees per year that retire. But the people who have resigned, we went from approximately seven or eight people in 2014 to as many as 19 people. And that's, that's a pretty good percentage increase. There is a cost to this program. A 2% merit increase pool costs approximately $127,000. Our, our average payroll is about a million dollars per payroll, so total payout is about $26 million. An accelerated portion of this program would likely cost an additional $60,000. But we expect results that we can reward employees and that we can retain them. And then the second thing you have is our employee benefits. There are several changes. The highlights are health insurance. You've already approved an increase in health insurance of 10% and different uh, contributions to health savings account. That's simply documented in what you have. The discretionary paid time off. Employees like to save, because we have a conservative workforce, they like to save some discretionary paid days off to the end of the year, but then if they don't use them, they lose them. Now we're allowed to carry over 24 hours. Overtime pay, we do not pay overtime automatically on holidays, but we are recommending that we include holidays paid in the calculation of 40 hours work, so that if an employee works over 40 hours in that week that they were paid, they get the overtime at that point. Bereavement pay, this has been a hardship for many employees who have expressed concern, so we're introducing that back into our benefits. And then shift premium simply allows department heads discretion with an average shift premium of 40 cents an hour. And again, this document somehow got mixed up, so you had this plan on the document, so that also has to be held over until the next council meeting. Thank you very much. My question for you is, is are there questions? Uh, any feel questions? Like, you feel you can support the program, or do you have any questions for me? Only person, Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question would be, have you tracked where your resignations have gone? What type of industry have they gone into? Similar industries. Most of the resignations are for people who are trained on our jobs. For example, we would have... Uh, a snowplow operator starting with us at 17 an hour and get trained and then jump over to the county. 
making 20 an hour because that's their minimum pay. Thank you. Uh, Alderperson Sorensen. I guess I just have a parliamentary inquiry. Um, on the agenda, it says pass the resolution. You said we're going to hold it. We have to hold right. it because the document is not the most current document, so we have to do that logistically. Right. So, Thank you. so we'll come back to this the first meeting, meeting the next meeting on the council. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is a, a good a good plan. To, um, it's very important that we retain the, the talent that we have and that we have a, a plan for the future to to entice people to, to stay within the city and grow within the city. So I think this is a, a good opportunity, even though it does have a cost. Again, we need to keep that talent and we need to stop having people jump ship um, just because of the, the dollar. We need to work on our benefits and our pay. When 36% is under the average, that's not a good sign. All the person in flesh. Um, just want to point out that the Finance and Personnel Committee spent extensive time going through all the details of everything that is here, all the different jobs and all the different benefit levels that we were looking at. So this is coming quickly, but we spent a good deal of time at the committee level actually reviewing it. And as an HR person, I think it's a really good plan that Sandy's put together. I hope we support it. Thank you for those comments. All the person Bellinger. Um, I I'm concerned about the accelerator, the way it's worded, and it says likely cost an additional 60000 What is exactly is it going to cost? I mean, I guess I, I don't want to support something with the word likely and then be surprised that it, you know, increases significantly or something down the road. So I guess I would like clarification to what exactly it is. Currently we have, I can give you statistics from last year, because this is a merit-based program. We don't know what, what people will earn. When I say likely, it is worst case scenario of uh, if every single person had an absolutely outstanding review and our budget was increased by 2% for merit increases. Last year we did a study on how many people actually received the 2% the and it was 65% of, of employees received it. So then there's uh, staggers, you know, a little below and a little above. Uh, but the amount that was eligible for that last year was 127000 so there was much less than that that was actually given, and it's based on performance. This is the complicated part of a merit program is you can't do across the board calculation. In most organizations, you have 2%, everyone gets lifted 2%. There, there's an absolute. Worst case scenario for this merit program was if everyone was an outstanding review, they would have received about 80000 in the cost. 60000 uses the same calculation of the portion of people that received different reviews as last year. Okay, so I guess I'm a little confused. I thought you identified certain positions that were under you know, and, and then you would know what those positions were to get them up, to get them accelerated, mm -hmm. and that would be a, you know, a finite number and be easy to pinpoint what that is. And you're saying that's not the case. What you have is a, is a merit <coughs> review guide. And so I can tell you that 36% of the people are under the midpoint for their position. Then based on where they fall, if they receive an exceeds or outstanding and the majority of performance and achievement of goals, they can get actually up to a 4%. Very few people will reach this threshold. So when I say projected cost of 60000 I do talk with every department head and I put out a projection with the input from department heads on where they felt the employees would be. So this is a, a it is a guesstimate, but it is a very educated guesstimate. When is the reviews due, and when would you know where these people fall? The reviews are due by the end of December. Okay. So then that's when we would know the exact number then? Correct. Okay. Thank you for those questions. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. And just following up on Alder Bellinger's uh, observations, it is very helpful for us to remember, and I, I appreciate that information, that. Um, are uh, bi-weekly, bi-monthly? Uh, bi-weekly, <laughs> 26 payrolls. Our 26 payrolls um, 
equal approximately $26 million. Yep, $1 million. All million. right. So that when we do put that um, accelerator portion of $60,000 in the context of that, um, it seems that, as we had discussed in finance and personnel, that the payback to the city in terms of retaining personnel that we've trained um, is will more than pay for itself. So I think that um, even if it is the full $60,000, I think it's a, a really smart way of, of, for us to be doing business <coughs> and, to, and to keep the, the folks that we've been training. If we put a cost, there's some estimates out there, six months to a year to the total cost of replacing a person is one year's salary of that job. So if our, if our turnover has gone just in resignations from seven people to 19, that's 12 extra people times an average $50,000. This is, this is an investment. It's not just a cost, it's an investment in, in retaining people. Okay, I see no more lights. Thank you very much. And it's got a few good questions out there. If anybody has any others, if you want to give Sandy a call during the two weeks before our next meeting. Items 4.3 through 4.9 will uh, be referred to various committees. Resolution 4.10 is resolution number 112 of 1718 by all the person Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the attached termination and release document regarding the South Pier townhomes. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass resolution, and I would recommend that uh, Chad comes up to explain the suspension and, and portion of it. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. To come there, kind of you go right there, Chad. Uh, at the last council meeting, the council approved a document that. Um, approve basically the sale of this land. So in the development agreement between the city and Portscape Apartments on South Pier, it gives them the option to exercise an option to actually purchase the land. Um, they had originally, were gonna purchase all of the land, so they're building on four parcels. Um, they're purchasing just the land under the first two parcels where the project that's completed today is. Um, at the last meeting, you approved um, some conditions to that sale. Uh, they're moving forward with the sale and um, in this termination and release document, there's been some modifications to it that their lender, the permanent lender, which is Fannie Mae, has uh, required and, and a couple of them are um, trivial or minor, but the, there's one in there about um, a release of a blue, of this land from the Blue Harbor Development Agreement. This, this, these parcels had originally been back in 2004 um, looked at as maybe potential, I would say, expansion for Blue Harbor Resort and um, kind of encompass that development agreement, encompass this land. And we're just releasing our uh, rights to that land so they can obviously purchase it um, with the pertinence on it. Blue Harbor isn't going to exercise their right to purchase it. So um, there's Chuck and I reviewed the information. We really don't have an issue with it. Uh, they would like to close on this first phase tomorrow, so that's the reason for the suspension. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Is there any um, problems with the suspension? Seeing none, under discussion, Alderperson Warren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chad, with this additional purchase of land, how many more units will we be building? <coughs> Uh, well, the first, they're actually purchasing the first space, so they're just purchasing where the 55 units are completely built today. And then next year, when the 35 units that are under construction, 33 units, 36 units, something like that, that are under construction today, um, then next year they'll be in here to buy the other two parcels under that agreement. Thank you. Any other discussion? So you know, the clerk please call the roll. Personnel Committee, who was referred R.O. number 213 of 1718 
by the Board of Water Commissioners seeking a revenue bond issuance in the amount of $4.74 million in 2018 for the combined purposes of funding the South Water Tower at $2.4 million and a refund of the 2007 revenue bonds at uh, $2.34 million for interest savings and resolution number 99 of 1718 by Alder Person Donahue providing for the sale of approximately uh, 4,855,000 water utility bonds series 2018 and recommends accepting and filing the report of officer and passing the resolution. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, file, and pass the resolution. Second. Okay. Thank you for the motion and support under discussion. Alder Person Born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my wife and I uh, own some of the 2007 revenue bonds. Therefore, I will be abstaining on this vote. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is, is RC number 189 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel Committee to was referred resolution number 98 of 1718 by all the persons dying here and born authorizing the establishment of an appropriation in the 2017 budget for engineering software and recommends passing the resolution. All the person dying here. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Item 5.3 is RC number 182 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee. Whom is referred communication number 3 of 1718 submitted by all the persons born in Sorensen submitting a communication and petition from David M. of 1144 Cherry Lane requesting that the parking restrictions on Cherry Lane be changed and recommends approving the request and direct city staff to draft an ordinance to comply with the request. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alder Person Bullshoe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just have a couple comments. One we had, um, we listened to the principal of South High School. This came before public safety and protection a couple years ago, and um, it was voted down not to remove um, the signs. And I'd like to hear from the police chief as to why and what's changed that we now, um, they're approving it when they didn't approve it a couple years ago. I think it's important that it remain the way it is, and I will not be in support of this. All that's happening today is that they're directing our office to draft an ordinance. They're not actually approving it tonight. Normally, this wouldn't even have come back to council. It probably shouldn't have, but it did. So directing us to, directing me to draft an ordinance. It'll go to Public Works next week and we'll come back to you the week after. When all that you're voting on tonight is, is directing me to draft an ordinance. So in the next meeting we'll be voting on this issue? Yes. Okay, and I'm curious as to why it's going, where it's going and not going back to public safety. Because all traffic matters have moved to Public Works as of a year ago or so. Traffic matters? That's correct. This falls under uh, the other ones that uh, that we've sent to public work now. We used to go to public protection and safety, now they're going to public works. Thank you. Okay, under further discussion, all the person sorry, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I will, I will speak in favor of this. Um, a lot of the, the neighbors that have spoken, um, uh, a large majority of them agree that we should, you know, try something new. This ordinance has been in place since 1994, um, and I guess I'll speak as 
probably the most recent recent high school uh, graduate from South High in the room. Um, that I, I don't think that a lot of students will you know, be going smoking in this area or eating their lunch. Um, anything, I don't do that either, Susie. Um, uh, in this area anymore. Uh, I, I'm all for trying something new, seeing if this works, if it doesn't work, then we can do a parking impact study, um, see if we can do permit parking only, but to get to that stuff, we have to uh, you know, remove the signs uh, where it's the parking during the school day. Um, so I'm, I'm in favor of this, uh, with that I do. Thank you for those comments. All the person says I uh, My question was answered, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I do have a, a question. I think Mr. Mims said that uh, this is directed to the city attorney that we are not in a position or we are not able to issue residence license or resident parking permits like we do in other parts of the city. Not yet. And could you just explain that process? So the residential permit parking process does require a traffic study. If you did a traffic study right now with no parking allowed, the traffic study would find no problem and would not allow the issuance of permits. Uh, you would actually have to withdraw the uh, regulations, then do the traffic study. Um, and you need to give them a little bit of time for things to settle, you know, for people to start realizing that that is now parking. The reason why we are required to do a traffic study for residential par uh, parking permit restrictions is because the assumption of the law is that the streets are available for the use of everyone uh, and to limit it to only the residents in the neighbor requires uh, in essence for there to be a situation that is uh, unusual and you prove that by the parking study. Um, I, and that's just an <clears throat> odd kind of quixotic way of, of approaching it, and um, by traffic, I assume you mean parking. For example, on Ontario Avenue between 5th and 6th Street, there is restricted parking, resident per permanent parking. Not a lot of traffic on that street, but there's a lot of parking, which is problematic. Um, so the traffic study really would reflect the parking study? I mean, it would reflect what is happening at various hours of the day Parking. Okay. Um, the reason I'm going to vote against this, and I understand procedurally now, and I appreciate that explanation, um, I just think it's a waste of time to draft the ordinance. So just to date myself, I was on the school board in 1994, and I remember the great difficulty <laughs> that the school was having at that time uh, with uh, students who were parking on uh, Cherry and Orchard and South 12th place. Um, and uh, it really is kind of a free zone. In other words, the city really, I'm sorry, the school district, the folks at South High don't really have a lot of jurisdiction. Those cars are not subject to um, search for no reason as they are in uh, the parking lots. Um, what was happening in 94, and I will just expect will quickly happen again, is this is a great place for kids to hang out. Those are nice streets. You know, those are nice lawns to sit on. Those are nice lawns to smoke and eat your lunch. Um, as Mr. Formolo indicated in his letter, um, students who would normally be exiting to the parking lot on the west will now be just coming out on the east side. It's quick. It'll be quicker. They won't have to walk around. And um, and then, and then we're going to have a number of neighbors who are um, concerned uh, about the trash, the littering, the kids hanging out, um, you know, just various things because this becomes, and I, I say playground, I don't mean a playground in the sense that these are not kids who use a playground, but um, it becomes an extended area for recreation, I guess, would be the, the best way to put it. So it was a big battle in 94. It took a long time, and it finally got through. And I think it's just kind of foolish for us. And I'm just wondering if there is some workaround, because the residents should be able to apply for a permit. Um, 
Chuck, who requires the traffic study? Do we or does the state? It's both. It's, uh, it's an ordinance, but it's based on the state statute. Really what should have happened is in 1994, they should have done the traffic study and done residential parking then. I was in here in 1994 to recommend that. <coughs> Uh, if they had done it two years later, I would have. Um, See, I got history that, on my side. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what they should have done. Um, and then we wouldn't be here. But they didn't. Um, and so now we're here. And so now we don't have the ability to go directly from where we're at to residential parking. It's confounding. Sorry. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I am in support of, of this. This is a good example of where. Um, a, a group of uh, constituents have come to the city, asked for change. We've, we've spent uh, two sessions in public works explaining and reviewing the situation like, uh, um, like uh, Alderman, um, not Alderman, sorry, um, like Chuck had reviewed the, the, the process, whether we like the process or not. Uh, they would like to see it go to a, some type of a, a permit basis but because of the, the rules in place, the study would have to be done. They understand that by taking this parking and going to you know, back to the way it was back in 1994 or 1993, 24 years ago, six graduating classes later, let's try to give people a little bit of uh, um, some benefit that things do change. If we're going to have rules and never look at changing them, um, I think that that's, that's a little old fashioned. Um, the, the neighbors understand that if it doesn't work, they can come back to the city and they can ask for the, the no parking to be reinstated, but they would like to try it and, you know, have a study done later um, to go to a permit basis. So I think it's, this is a good example of how we're looking at a situation that's uh, decades old. We understand the safety and security issue. And if something does happen, we can react as quickly as we are in um, changing it back to uh, parking. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. All the person in flesh. I also was on the school board in 1994 when we actually adopted the current policy and worked very long and hard with the neighbors to come up with a policy that would address <coughs> the problem situation we had then. And I'm opposed to changing it now. person born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I attended the uh, public works meeting along with Alderman Sorensen, uh, both Aldermen from the 8th District attended the public works meeting and we heard the debate on both sides. Uh, one thing that impressed me at the meeting was something that Alderman Bellinger said and that he said that the North High students appear to be very well behaved in, in all regards around North High School. He has yet to receive a complaint from his constituents in the North High area. Uh, I see no reason why that can't happen at South High School. Uh, this is almost unanimous in the neighborhood, and therefore I'm going to support making the change, seconding pretty much what Alderman Sorensen has already said. If it doesn't work out, I'm sure Mr. Hempsing and other neighborhood neighbors will, bring, will be bringing, bringing it to our attention. But I feel comfortable with the vast majority of students uh, uh, going in the entrance over on the Washington side. Uh, I think it has a good chance of working and I think we should give it a chance. So I would recommend to you to uh, vote to have uh, the city attorney draft the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Truster. Uh, I live on the north side and I can tell you that the students at North High School are not as uh, controlled as what uh, Alderman Bellinger would like you to think because I personally have complained to the principal at North High School that the kids that park by the cemetery where my mom and dad are both buried uh, tend to throw their trash, empty their cars, and it blows into the cemetery. And I have asked the principal on several occasions to please have the children come out and pick up the trash. So I am not voting in favor of this. Thank you for those comments. All the person down to you. Uh, just very briefly, I, I would suggest that if the neighbors think that they're going to have more parking uh, available to them, they probably will not because the students are going to be very happy to park up their streets. So if they're hoping for additional parking, I don't think this is their solution. All the 
person starts. I just want to make a few more comments. Um, I'll let anyone guess where I was in 1994. <laughs> um, but if we, if we listen to what Principal Formolo was saying, that the entrance to South High School has changed. Students cannot access uh, the 12th Street entrance during the school day um, or, or you know, any time you know, before or after school. So students aren't going to park on Cherry Lane and walk all the way around over there. I was a student at South High <coughs> not that long ago. Um, <laughs> so I don't think, especially in the winter, I don't think students are going to be hanging around outside by their car um, walking all the way around just to get into school to eat a hamburger or whatever from McDonald's and, and throw their butt around. Um, I think, you know, this ordinance was put in place 24 years ago. A lot has changed in this, uh, this time. And I also want to reiterate that this has been a constituent-driven uh, initiative. Um, 16 of the 15 neighbors that live in this neighborhood have signed a petition asking for this. So it's the citizens, it's the people asking for uh, something, to try something different. And if it doesn't work, um, you know, I'm sure that through the government process, we'll act very quickly um, and address the situation that takes us. That's my hope. So. Thank you. All the person Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to clarify something that uh, Alderman Morris stated. Um, at the Public Works Committee meeting, uh, there was a comment made by uh, Mr. Hemsing that um, he referred to North and he said if you just if you go back to that, just look what what's going on up at North. It's a complete mess. Was the was the word that he used, and I took objection to that, stating that um, I've recently had three kids go through North. I'm heavily involved with the North North Boys Basketball Booster Club. I'm up there all the time. I represent that district. Um, there has not been one complaint that I've received regarding anything as far as parking goes. I did have one a couple of years ago on North 12th Street where they wanted to have a um, uh, commuter impacted parking study done. Uh, Engineer Ryan Sassman with the city conducted that study, determined that it fit the requirement. There was that um, restriction put in place and the residents were able to buy permits and everything has been fine. There's not garbage, there's not cigarette butts, there's not loitering, you know, there's not kids hanging out on lawns. There's, there's none of that. What Alderman Trusker is referring to is North 10th Street and that's along the cemetery and that is not commuter impacted parking. There's no resident along, you know, except the dead people living there, you know, if you count that. But I mean, there's, there, there's no homes or anything on that one side of the street. And certainly, you know, things can happen, you know, garbage, you know, I mean, you go down any street, you're gonna see, you know, some garbage or, you know, some, something, you know, not in, in the condition that you would ideally like it. And, you know, and that's unfortunate, but it has nothing to do with commuter impacted parking. And I would just like to ask um, city attorney, um, you mentioned that this isn't the normal process and you know that um, it's just a resolution or that you've been asked to draft the resolution and um, that it's gonna come back for approval. It, that was done at your request, correct? At the public works committee meeting that that's how it began. Should we have done something differently? What I had asked that you do is do what we normally do, which would be to direct me to uh, uh, draft an order, which you did. How it came to council tonight is beyond me. I don't know how that came to happen because what what you did is voted to direct me to, to draft an ordinance that's going to come back to public works. So tonight. So is, how did this happen then? I don't know how it got put on the agenda. Unfortunately, I was gone Friday, so. Okay. If I'd have seen it, I'd have asked them to take it off. Thank you for that explanation. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other lights, the clerk please call the roll for passage. I vote to draft the ordinance. Right. Yes. That, what are we voting on specifically? And my vote would be to file a document. And I guess technically to ask you to draft the ordinance, although public works is already asking you to do that. I for me. You're not him. Now I'm there. Now I am. Okay, now it just came up. We're back. <laughs> 
Nine eyes, six no's. Motion passes. I'm going on to ordinances. Item 6.1 will lie over. Matters laid over. Item 7.1 is RC number 181 of 1718 by Public Safety Committee to whom uh, met and discussed a request for public safety consideration IFC by Fire Chief Rowan to recommend that the Common Council authorize city staff to seek bid for station uh, number one building repairs consistent with the adopted 2018 budget and recommends approval of the request. Call the person drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make a motion to approve or to accept an account. Okay. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? See, now will the clerk please call the roll. Is there a reason these don't go to committee? The parking assessments? They're lying over, but did they go to a committee at all? No, never have. No, never have. No. Usually on consent, but we just got them, so okay, thank you. Okay, next uh, item is a contemplated uh, closed session. All the person both. Thank you, Mayor. I'm a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub e, Wisconsin stat, for the purpose of reviewing st strategy and collective bargaining negotiation for bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Do 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.